All right, guys, today we've got a 2017 Honda Pilot in here. We're doing a valve latch adjustment on it. We wanted to go over how we do that procedure and the benefits of doing it. Let's get into it. All right, guys, let's go over uh, the valve latch adjustment and the maintenance interval on them. Um, and you guys have worked back in the 90s, their rocker design with the solid state rockers adjustments. They're still the same design nowadays. Um, however, they have changed the maintenance schedule on it. They used to say every 100,000 miles. Now, looking at it here on all data, it states that adjust the valves during service A, B, 1, 2, or 3 if they are noisy. So, basically going off of experience in years past, um, when they used to recommend it 100,000, we still kind of go by that because the design is still the same. Um, if you want to look in here, we've got an adjuster screw and a nut. So you are basically adjusting that clearance between the base of that rocker and the top of that valve. Um, you can do this with a wrench and a screwdriver. I happen to have this fancy dancy tool here from, uh, I wanna say it's Blue Point. Yep, Blue Point. That comes in really handy. Everything's in one, one spot. Um, and then you've got your feeler gauges, of course. And that's how you check the actual gap in between that. So, um, going through the procedure here, just want to, basically I look up the camshaft, obviously that's going to have the clearance in there. I tried to just search clearance on this car and it doesn't want to show up, but here it is, valve clearance adjust. So a little, little side note to this, if you guys are struggling trying to find exactly what you're looking for in your database, think about other components that have to be removed to do that job and sometimes you can find it for whatever reason the search bar won't pull it up but it is there so <clears throat> on this vehicle and all Hondas for that matter you're setting piston number one at top dead center on the compression stroke um, Honda is nice enough to label the camshaft and it shows you cylinders one two three four five six probably hard to see on that camshaft itself but there are numbers there Let's see if yeah we can see a five there two there at the top so on side note on this here we were doing a timing belt on this vehicle so that's why we have the cover off but Honda does have an access port to where you can see those numbers without having to take that cover off so you basically open that up rotate it around and you'll be able to see your numbers and you line them up with that tip of that point there um, just a little side question, if we got any Honda techs on, or uh, Honda dealer techs on here. I have heard that the newer, maybe 2022, 2023 Hondas have gone away from this valve lash, or this uh, rocker arm design. If anybody knows any truth to that or any information on that, please let us know. I'm just curious to know. Um, but obviously, to do a valve lash adjustment on any of the Hondas, you have to remove the valve cover on the V6s. It requires you to pull the, the intake plenum off. So we've got that all off. Um, I went ahead and did the, the back bank off camera just because I know it'd be a booger to film. So we're gonna go ahead and go through and adjust our cylinders. This will be four, five, and six. So we're gonna rotate our camshaft over to cylinder number four. So if you want to get a look there, basically I'm just going off of the, the crank bolt here. Side note on this makes it a lot easier to turn these engines if you pull the spark plugs out so you're not fighting the compression. So that was the end of compression stroke there. So we have to go back around one time. All right, now we're cylinder one compression. And there's cylinder four. Right. Well, if you can get in there, you can see the mark line up there. So you've got the alignment mark here on the plate and alignment mark here on the camshaft gear. So we're lined up there. Um, 
I like to start with the intake valve, just personal preference. Um, I hope I'll show the specs too here. So all of your Hondas, they used to put it on the sticker back in the day, which was real nice. It's no longer there now though. So you do have to go in and find your spec through your database. So we've got a eight thousandths to nine thousandths on the intake, eleven thousandths to twelve thousandths on the exhaust. So we've got a nine thousandths here, and we're going to check our intake. So what you're looking for here is to just have a, a slight amount of drag. You don't want to have to put a lot of effort into it, and you don't want it to free flow. So honestly, that one there is about perfect. You can see it's not. Not super loose, but it doesn't take a ton of muscle to move it. It's got a little bit of drag to it. That one's pretty good. Yeah, his buddy is not. Y'all can see how easy that one's moving around. So let's adjust that bad boy. I really like this tool because it's got a little open window. So you can see to get the screwdriver lined up there. So you bust the lock nut loose, basically just a little little turn at a time. And start feeling for that drag you want. Typically when you tighten the lock nut back up, it's going to increase the gap slightly. So when I'm adjusting while the lock nut's loose, I kind of go a little bit tighter than what I want to feel when I'm done. So cinch that down. And I always feel the drag with the same hand. I don't like to bounce. I don't like to bounce back and forth from left to right hand. You just have one hand. You kind of just get used to that feel as you go. All right, so that one's still just a little too loose. That's good right there. Oh, sorry. And now we'll go to the exhaust side, which can be kind of a booger. That one can use a little tightening there. That one's very loose. So a couple things you'll see on these Hondas, um, in the 90s, basically, you would know when they needed an adjustment, you would hear them. You could almost hear them pull in a parking lot. Um, but nowadays, on some of these, I have actually noticed that with time, the exhaust valve clearance will actually get too tight. And I have actually seen them get tight enough to where they start hanging the exhaust valve partially open and you'll start getting some misfire codes and things of that nature. Generally you'll see when the engine's cold it won't misfire but once it gets hot you'll start feeling a slight misfire. Doesn't happen that often but I've had a, a couple over the years that do that. So you definitely don't want these things to be too tight. Guy feels pretty good. Let's come over and get this one here. And I also have a modified screwdriver just from doing these over the years. This tool with the screwdriver it comes with in some spots, it's just the handle's too long. So I made a custom screwdriver. If anybody knows of a tool like this that comes with a smaller screwdriver, I'd love to know be nice to have or be able to recommend to people. Right. 
So we're good on that cylinder there. Um, for the sake of time, obviously, you would continue on, go around each, each rotation or each mark on the camshaft. You would make the adjustments to the associated number, cylinder, whatever cylinder is on the camshaft. And once you get through that, what I like to do is I like to rotate the engine around. So keep in mind that in order to get back to compression stroke, you've got a two rotations to get there, so. Now we're on exhaust. Compression. And we're coming back to cylinder four now. So basically you would rotate the engine over back to where you're on the compression side of things and go back and double check your clearances. So again, I like to just start on the intake side. Let's come back in here. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. I'm gonna leave that there. in there booger there we go that one feels good now i will tell y'all one thing everybody's a little bit different um i've just noticed with myself over the years i tend to adjust valves slightly tighter than i guess they might like or i think i do <laughs> so i always use the feeler gauge that's on the upper end of the specification that way, if I get it just slightly too snug, it's still gonna be within specification. So now at this point, once I'm a double check, a verified, I know 100% those valves are adjusted the way they need to be. Come in here and get your torque spec. So the torque spec is 20 Newton meters for the lock nut. So set our torque wrench here to 20 Newton meters. And then I'll check and make sure our torque's good on these lock nuts. Good there. Good there. Yeah, that one was a little bit loose. We definitely need to double check that one. All right, so once you torque them, I always want to make sure that by torquing them i didn't change any of the lash there in theory you're not going to but it could rotate that stud to where it would tighten it up so the intake valves are good on that cylinder the exhaust valves they can be a little bit tougher to get the feeler gauge in there just because of the angle all right that one still feels pretty good another thing you can do with these feeler gauges just to make your life easier don't be afraid to bend them into a 90 degree 45 however you need to bend them not gonna hurt anything just make sure you don't put a crease in this area here just make sure you kind of support that when you're moving it so all right, so that's the, the principle of it, and you would go through and do every cylinder. Um, I like to do one bank at a time, go through, torque that bank, be done with one bank, go to the next bank, do that whole bank. Just the procedure I, I like to go by. If you look at the service procedure, it tells you to do them in order of cylinders, so it's just a personal preference thing. So the last thing we want to cover on this is why do we do this service? Um, for obviously there's other reasons other than they say to do it. So two things come to mind. I think we already kind of mentioned a little bit is a rattling noise. 
and a potential for the valve to be too tight, resulting in a, a misfire condition. So keeping that lash and why you have a lash is due to the thermal expansion of the metal. So as the engine gets hotter, that gap actually decreases, which I don't think we mentioned that earlier. Another thing on this, and I believe it says it in the service procedure, I have to check. You want to do this on an engine that is cold. So this vehicle we pulled in last night, I already had the valve covers off last night so that I could come in fresh this morning and that I know the engine was cold. So that's, that's the main two reasons you want to do the, the lash adjustment is obviously if you hear any rattling noises, you definitely want to do it. But as a, from a maintenance standpoint of doing it, you want to make sure that they are not getting too tight and going to result in a, a misfire for your client. And, and, it, and it definitely smooths the vehicle out. Um, performance, obviously if the gap gets too large, then you're not getting enough valve opening and it could hinder the performance. I don't know that I've ever seen one get that big of a gap, but the potential is there. Hope you guys liked the video. If you have an answer to the question about the tooling or the new design lifters, please let us know in the comments below. And if you got any questions or comments, please let us know. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification and we'll see you on the next one.